Hey everybody, what's going on? Spastic Toaster back here with SmartMan.com, bringing you guys a breakdown of Madden 17's new yellow zones or hook zones. Um, so the first thing I want to go over is, once again, how you can tell the difference between them in the play call screen. So right now we're under cover 2 zone, and in every cover 2 zone coverage, you're going to find a middle read in the middle of the field with two vertical hooks right next to it. So as you can see right here, the, the two outside yellow routes on cover 2 press are slightly lighter than the one in the middle. And you're going to find that's the same for all of them. And, and every cover 2 zone coverage is like that. Except for cover 2 carry. If you find any play called cover 2 carry, that means that the middle yellow route is actually going to be a 3 receiver hook. So instead of playing deep down the middle of the field, that 3 receiver hook is going to focus on the 3 receiver side. Which is not probably ideal for cover 2. So in cover 2 zone, if you're going to run it, I would recommend running any cover 2 that's not cover 2 carry. Now... If we look at cover 3 zone, we see the yellow zones are slightly different. So any cover 3 zones are going to have two hook curls in the middle of the field. So as you can see in the top here in cover 3 cloud, the, the yellow zones are, are very light. They're almost like a white color. And those are going to be hook curl zones. Now, if we go to cover 4 zone, the this yellow zone in the middle of the field is just like the one we saw in cover 2 carry. And it's actually going to be the 3 receiver hook. So cover 4 press, you're going to find, or any cover 4 zone coverage, you're going to find 3 receiver hooks. Any cover 3 zone, you're going to find hook curls. Now, if we look at a play like cover 9, that may not have hook curls. That may have vertical hooks. And then if we look at cover 2 zone, like we said before, we're going to find middle reads and vertical hooks, except for cover 2 carry, which we're going to find 3 receiver hooks. Now, one thing that makes yellow zones unique in this game is that you can actually audible to 3 of the 4 zones on the field. So as you see right now, I'm the mid-read player. I'm currently in a mid-read zone. But if I step out to where about the tackler is on either side of the field and I switch and I try to hot route to a hook zone, I will actually switch to a hook curl. Then if I step out beyond this tackle and do it again, my player switches to a vert hook. So you have three options with every player on the field. You can put them in a hook curl, a vert hook, or if you put them in the middle, you can put them in a middle read. So the one route we're missing is obviously a three receiver hook, which you're going to have to come out a cover four or a cover two carry in order to have that option on the field. Okay, now it's time to talk about how these zones actually work in terms of gameplay. So as we see on the field right now, we got two vert hooks on either side as well as a mid-read. So this mid-read player right here is going to be responsible for taking away anything deep down the middle of the field. And the reason they're used primarily in cover two zones is because the middle of the field is typically exposed. So if we put John Brown on a streak here and motion him to the left, just to get him kind of centered in the middle of the field, we should see that Bobby Wagner is going to follow him all the way down the field because he realizes there's no one in the middle of the field to take him away. So the mid-read player right here, which is Bobby Wagner, should follow John Brown all the way down the middle of the field because there's no one there. Now obviously, if you do have a linebacker there and they have a fast receiver, he's going to get burnt. So keep that in mind. You may not, may not want to stay in a cover two if you know your opponent's going to go deep down the middle of the field. Alright, now in this instance, where we still have the mid-read on the field with Bobby Wagner, but we have no one going deep down the middle of the field, he's just going to sit in the middle and play just like a regular hook zone. He's going to take away everything in this area, pretty much anything that comes his way. So the center of the ball here, we should see... A is actually going to come into his zone, and he should try to step in front of that and take that away. As you can see here, he does, and he breaks that. Well, he almost breaks that up. Um, aggressive catching is still a little bit uh, too overpowered, in my opinion, but that's okay. Uh, but as you can see there, Bobby Wagner did step in front of that and take that away. We'll try it one more time here. As you can see, mid-read, we can put John Brown on a curl as well here, just to, to kind of have two routes going across the middle. So we'll put John, John Brown on a drag, uh, snap the ball. Bobby Wagner is going to play the deeper route. Uh, and then, obviously, other people are going to have to take away John Brown. Alright, now it's time to talk about how vertical hook zones work. So vert hooks actually work pretty much the exact same way that mid-reads work, except they're on the outside. And in this instance, since we have a deep blue zone right behind the vert reads, if the guy goes on the streak, they don't have to follow it all the way down the field, because they know they have backup behind them. So if we put A and Y on streaks right here, like this, we should see that they're not going to worry about them for a long time. They're going to they're gonna bump them at first and check them, but after they know they're taken away by the deep blues, they're going to step up and cover other people. So if we go into instant replay here, we should see that on each side of the field, we're going to have the vertical route kind of taken care of for a second. It steps in front of it like it should, and then once it knows it's taken care of, it's going to step in front of other receivers, such as Michael Floyd over here on the right, and then on the left side, the same thing should happen. We're going to have I don't know, I think this is, I'm not, I'm not sure who this is, might be KJ Wright, but anyway, this guy right here is going to take away John Brown, bump him, and then take away the next most important thing on the side of the field, 
which is Larry Fitzgerald on that corner route. Now, one other thing I want to point out is that if, if Earl Thomas was in a purple route over here, and same with Camp Chancellor like this, and we didn't have Bobby Wagner here, for some reason, if this was your zone coverage, and we put A and Y on streaks, the vert hooks are actually going to be responsible for taking them away. They're actually going to go all the way downfield with them because they realize they don't have safety help over the top. So they're going to take away anything deep first and then move up. But in this case, they only have someone deep, so that's what they're going to focus on. So snap the ball here. We should see that on the left side, our, our linebacker actually followed the receiver down the field. But on the right side, he did not. So keep in mind that, I mean, typically you're not going to have no deep blue zones over there. But in some cases, the linebacker will follow him like we do, do here on the left side. He actually follows that streak all the way down the field. And obviously he gets burnt because John Brown is way too fast for, for this linebacker right here. Um, on the right side, the same thing should happen. But this curl right here confused, confused the linebacker and caused no one to cover this receiver. Uh, so in theory, the vertical hook should cover both streaks. But in that case, it did not. So make sure you do have someone over the top like Cam Chancellor uh, just to make sure that everything is taken away. Okay, now it's time to talk about hook curls. So hook curls work pretty much the exact same way as middle reads and vertical hooks. Now they're just in a different spot on the field. So if we were to put Y and A both on streaks, they're going to take them away for a second and then move up to anything else shallow. So they're going to follow A and Y until they know that they have safety help over the top. So the sample ball here, we should see that both Y and A are taken away by the linebackers, and then the linebackers move up to focus on other things. Now, if we were to have a, a deep crossing route across the middle of the field against these hook curls, maybe like the, the post route to A, it will get taken away by both of them. It's going to start with the first one, then pass it off to the second one. So we'll go into the replay here and show you guys that, uh, if you didn't catch it. But what happens here is this post is going to be taken away first by this linebacker on the right. So right here, he tries to break across the middle of the field, taken away for a second, then pass it off to this linebacker where he'll follow him the rest of the way. So one thing you should notice about middle reads, vertical hooks, and hook curls, they all work exactly the same way, or almost exactly the same way. Middle reads are a little bit different, but the only real difference, or the, the, the main difference, is that they're in different spots on the field. So we can have a vert hook on the outside, we can have a hook curl right here in the like the middle of the field, and then we can put a mid read right in the center of the field. So those are the main differences between the zones, just really positioning, and then obviously mid-read functions slightly differently where it will take receivers deeper down the field. All right, now it's time to talk about three receiver hooks. So what three receiver hooks are going to do is they're going to play basically just like the rest of the zones, but they're going to favor playing it on whichever side has three receivers. So right now that'd be the right side. So if we put this guy in the middle of the field and snap the ball, we should see that linebacker move over to the right to try to take away zones on the right side because it's focusing on the three receiver side. So snap the ball here, we should see he moves over to the right and then moves back to the middle of the field. So his first focus is going to be the three receiver side, and then once it knows stuff is taken away, it'll move back to the left. So again, we'll snap the ball here. Takes away stuff on the right if it can, but here he's kind of in a bad spot because he has X and A both wide open, and X actually ends up being the deeper route on that slant, so he's going to focus on the deeper route. So snap the ball here once again. We'll see. He looks at A for a second, but realizes X is going to be more of a threat because he's, he's deeper down the field. Now, if we were to motion John Brown over here to the left side, Bobby Wagner is actually going to focus on the left side first now, and that's because the running back, David Johnson, in the backfield actually counts as a receiver. So we have Larry Fitzgerald, John Brown, and David Johnson all on the left. So that's three receivers to the left. So now Bobby, Bobby Wagner should focus on that left side of the field. So let's snap the ball here. The th three receiver hook is going to focus on the left side of the field first. So that's how they work. That's how, how three receiver uh, hooks work. They're going to take away the, the heavier side of the field and then move on to anything else that isn't taken away. So I think that's pretty much going to do it for this video. I think I explained everything pretty well. Once again, you, if you come out and play with three receiver hook, you have the three receiver hook option. You can hot route to a mid read. You can hot route them to a hook curl or hot route them to a vert hook. Four options all in one play if you come out in a three receiver hook. I hope I broke the plays down well enough for you guys. Once again, if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, I'll be happy to answer them. Thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe, and I will catch you guys next time.